you are welcome to my channel thanks for visiting thanks for subscribing thanks for sharing my presentations today the topic will be vancomycin vancomycin could be under different brand names vancosin pms vancomycin vevang vancosal pack or vancomycin hydrochloride by classification, it is a glycopeptide antibiotic. Farms could be used intravenously for systemic purpose. In that case, you have to reconstitute the powder. And with that, you may dilute that and use it for oral administration as well. If you want anything intravenously and it is vancomycin, it could be in generic form. Uh, 750 milligram per 150 ml up to 1750 milligram per 350 ml. Generic 500 milligram in 10 ml is also available, and the brand Vancouver Pack as 1 gram per 100 ml in normal saline is available. You can also find generic pack 1 gram. About 200 ml in normal selling. Other forms could be capsule. In that case, you can find the brand Vancosin at 250 mg capsule, Vancosin at the chloride 125 mg, or generic Vancomycin 125 mg or 250 mg. Could be other solution. In that case, the brand Fevang, 25 mg per ml or 50 mg per ml, generally 250 mg per 5 ml, and you must shake well, shake well before use. Lastly, when it comes to different forms of vacuumersin, it could be in suppository form or rectal form. In that case, it's going to be as a retention enema per rectal. Okay? You might find 500 mg in 100 or 500 ml of normal cell. You can use ringa lactate if sodium chloride or normal saline is causing hyperchloremia. Administration. Please give vancomycin slowly at not greater than 5 mg per ml intravenously for intermittent infusion. You may give it 500 mg IV slowly over 30 minutes. If you give vancomycin too rapidly, we will run into trouble. And what will happen? There may be hypotension, may go into shock, the patient can come down with cardiac arrest, and if cold blue is not caught on time, the patient might die. So, no rapid administration of vancomycin intravenously. If this patient is on fluid restriction, you can increase the concentration, not the volume of the normal saline to be given. So you can increase the concentration to 10 milligram per mil, not 5 milligram per mil, please. If this patient is on fluid restriction and you must give vancomycin, increase the concentration of vancomycin inside the same volume. Per meal, instead of 5 mg, make it 10 mg vancomycin per meal. Please, don't give this medication intramuscularly. No. Remember, we will run into red man syndrome. Are you curious about red man syndrome? Don't worry. I'll be there in a bit. Still on administration, you can give antihistamine before infusion of vancomycin. Why that? To prevent some reactions. In extravasation, aspirate. Don't flush, please. You can have dry compression. Aspirate is better. Don't flush. You can give vancomycin intraventricular for cerebrospinal fluid shunt or intravitre for ophthalmic purposes. 
You may also embark on antibiotic lock technique. Mechanism of action of vancomycin. Vancomycin inhibits bacterial cell wall synthesis by blocking glycopeptide polymerization. Through binding tightly to D alanine, D alanine portion of the cell wall precursor. Coverage. Yes, we are exacted. Methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus will be covered by vancomycin. That's the great news, right? Mm -hmm. Then it will cover Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, Enterococcus, and Corneal bacteria. Uses. Needless to say that the first on my list will be methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. As a matter of fact, that is the situation under which I will first of all think of vancomycin, you know, because we don't want vancomycin resistance, you know, strains all around. So we use it when we are dealing with a problem. Methicillin resistance staphylococcus aureus. Also, in uh, CSF fluid shunt infection, neurosurgeons will make use of that. In cystic fibrosis, dealing with acute pulmonary exacerbation, you can go for vancomycin. In Clostridioides difficile, otherwise known as Clostridium difficile, that is the old name. Okay, pseudomembranal colitis, right? See there. Mm -hmm. You can go for that. In diabetic mellitus food, you can go for vancomycin. Still part of the uses of vancomycin will be in effective endocarditis. That is when penicillin will not be used here, either because of allergy to penicillin or resistance to penicillin. In end of termitis treatment, go for vancomycin. In intra-abdominal infection and you need broad coverage or intracranial abscess or meningitis, that is bacteria, and you don't want to use other antibiotics or because resistance has been built, then go for vancomycin. In osteomyelitis, peritonitis, pneumonia, prosthetic joint infection, sepsis, or severe inflammatory response syndrome, you can go for vancomycin. But you may not go for vancomycin as the first agent under these following situations. In septic shock, in skin or soft tissue infection, in neonatal group B streptococcus infection, either for prophylaxis or treatment, you can make use of vancomycin. In tussitual syndrome or ventriculitis. Now, contraindications. We will not use vancomycin if there is a hypersensitivity to vancomycin or any component of its formulation. One, mm -hmm. if you are using vancomycin for systemic infection, don't give it per aura. So, you must give it intravenously for that. If you are using it to undo Clostridioides difficile or Clostridium difficile, don't go for intravenous. Go for per aura. Still part of the warning is if you are battling with renal capability issues, then you have to be careful with IV dosages. For example, number one, if creatinine clearance is greater than 90, then you can load with 25 to 30 milligram per kilogram. And you can have your maintenance at 15 to 20 milligram per kilogram. You may give both every 12 hours or every 8 hours. However, if creatinine clearance is less than 30, then your loading dose must drop to 20 mg per kilogram. Your maintenance must drop to 10 to 15 mg per kilogram. And you extend the hours. So the frequency will reduce 
So instead of every 12 to or 8 hours, it's now going to be every 12 to every 48 hours. Now, what still is if creatinine clearance is less than 15, then you have to be monitoring the serum vacuumizing more and more before you even administer. And of course, it will never be less than every 24 to 48 hours. In hemodialysis, if highly permeable, load with 25 mg per kilogram and maintain at 10 mg per kilogram. If in hemodialysis with less permeability, you can load with 25 mg per kilogram and maintain at 7.5 mg per kilogram. We can see the difference of the dosage in maintenance. In hemodialysis that is highly permeable, 10 mg per kilogram, but less permeable, it is 7.5 mg per kilogram. Still on warnings, please let there be adequate hydration always. When your patient is on vacuumycin, ask me why that? It is hydrophilic. I don't need to tell you what the meaning of hydrophilic is. Do you need that? The sound level monitoring should be taking place every 24 to 48 hours. Now, in children, dosing is between 45 to 60 milligrams per kilogram per day. But get this right. The total dosage calculated is for one day. You are not going to give that per dose. It's per day. So you have to divide whatever you get per day to three or four divided doses. And let me give you an example right here. So, if you have your full dosage calculated, so it is likely you are going to give 10 to 15 milligram per kilogram every six to eight hours. Okay? The maximum daily dose is two gram per day. Intraperitoneal administration may lead to abdominal pain or chemical peritonitis. There might be permanent visual loss due to hemorrhagic occlusive retinal vasculitis when you use vancomycin for intraocular conditions. Note that and let the patient note this before you use it for intraocular condition and let consent be signed or else you get sued because they can come down with permanent visual loss. Fungi and bacteria superinversion may occur when you use vancomycin for a long time. I won't. You can give vancomycin per aura for C, you know, Clostridium difficile infection or Clostridioides difficile infection and enterocolitis, give it per aura. But for systemic problems, give it intravenous. Adverse reactions. Ah, we don't want to hear this, right? But it's true. You might be dealing with anaphylaxis that is immune mediated or Redman syndrome that is non-immune anaphylactoid reaction. Now, the right man syndrome. For nurses and medical students, if you can't remember anything about side effects or adverse reaction of vancomycin, you must remember RMS, red man syndrome. In red man syndrome, there will be rashes, flushing, pruritus, hypotension, chest pain, dyspnea, cardiac arrest, but not surely life-threatening. I don't know how to define that. When we say it's not life-threatening, cardiac arrest is life-threatening. Rapid infusion or a very large dose will teach us to this. Yes. Remember, I said earlier, don't rush vancomycin to that system. Slow IV infusion. This could be aggravated. That is, Redman syndrome could be aggravated if you are given other medication concomitantly 
when you are giving your vancomycin, like ciproforcesin, barbiturates, opioids. If you are giving any of this at the same time that you are administering vancomycin and you are administering a light dose of vancomycin, you are administering vancomycin rapidly, you will come down with a red man syndrome in that patient and the patient may die from cardiac arrest. Still an adverse reaction, Crocidroid DVC is associated with intravenous vancomycin. Yeah, we might believe it's not, but that is the way it's possible. So use within three days and up to three months after use can lead to Crocidroid DVC. This is more possible if certain antibiotics are used concomitantly. For example, you don't want Crocidroid's DVCL to come up in that patient and you want to use vancomycin, then don't use clindamycin at the same time. You know clindamycin is a friend to Crocidroid's DVC. Yeah. Fluoroquinolones, like um, ciprofloxacin, will give you this. Tavolosporins could give you Crocidroid DVC when you use it with vancomycin. So, clindamycin, fluoroquinolone, tavolosporins. Don't use them together if you don't want Crocidroid DVC. Also, in old age people, now, elderly patients, people who have been staying in the hospital for a long time, and people with decreased immunity, of course, old age and long stay in the hospital will both likely give you decreased immunity. But people can have decreased immunity even when they are not old, even when they are not in the hospital for a long time. Other adverse reactions include drug induced immune trouble cytopenia, hypersensitivity reactions like drug rash. AGEP simply means acute generalized enzymatic postulosis, toxic abdomen necrolysis, Steven Johnson syndrome, erythema multiforming, exfoliative dermatitis, drug rash with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms. Nephrotoxicity. This will be worse in anyone with pre-existing renal disease. That is why I went through creatinine clearance level the other time. So you adjust the dose of vancomycin based on the value of creatinine clearance. If you want to get that, you can pause and rewind to that particular page. In individuals that are critically ill, there might be nephrotoxicity. Other nephrotoxic drugs at the same time that you are using vancomycin could give nephrotoxicity. Okay, you know such drugs like aminoglycoside, right? If you are using this systemic um, vancomycin for systemic problem and you are using it intravenously, you are likely going to run into nephrotoxicity. Okay. And of course, patients with acute kidney injury might have nephrotoxicity. Longer duration of vancomycin, obese patients might have nephrotoxicity. But there's a good news here. Nephrotoxicity, secondary to vancomycin usage, is mostly reversible. Like I said, mostly reversible. But some few cases, might not have it reversible. Still on adverse reactions, there might be severe neutropenia with severe agranulocytosis. Also, there might be pancytopenia, but the good news is this is reversible. Now, ototoxicity. Ototoxicity is infrequent with vancomycin. It is Associated with tinnitus, centrinuria, hearing loss, dizziness, and vertigo. And ototoxicity will be worse with aminoglycoside use and also worse with renal failure. 
still on adverse reactions, intravenous vancomycin and other reactions could be chills, malaise, myalgia, wheezing, with or without fever, increased blood real nitrogen and creatinine, and clostridioides devicel. If you give vancomycin per aura, associated adverse reactions might be hypokalemia. Oh, let me pause here and let's de debate this. Could this be an advantage? If the patient is having problem with Clostridium difficile and he or she is having hypokalemia, then I'll be happy to prescribe vancomycin to bring down the level of potassium. But if that is not the case, then I must keep an eye on the value of potassium. So hypokalemia, abdominal pain, peripheral edema, flatulence, urinary tract infection, headache, anemia, insomnia, or depression. You have to keep an eye from depression to suicidal thoughts, suicidal addiction, attempted suicide, and frank suicide if care is not taken. Drug drug interaction. Because the list is pretty long, I will not be able to go into that right now. So have you know, the contact with a pharmacist or clinical pharmacologist. Your physician will be able to guide. In pregnancy, don't use vancomycin. And if you must use vancomycin, you must never use one that contains PEC, that is polyethylene glycol. And nada, that is N acetyl D alanine. Don't use that in pregnant women. And if you must use it, you must take it with food. Monitoring. For intravenous vancomycin, have renal function tests done periodically and have beta omicroni gonadotrophin done before you so that you don't use one containing PEG or not. Take complete blood count. Remember, there's likelihood of thrombocytopenia and a granulocytosis. Even pancytopenia, but it is reversible. Then, periodically, particularly for patients on this medication for a long time, have serum concentration of acromycin taken. Finally, on monitoring, if vancomycin is administered per aura or rectal route, then you may think I've not given it systemically, so I'm not going to have systemic effect. That may be wrong. There may be systemic absorption if there's renal failure or colitis, though you've given it per aura or rectal. Besides that, there's no much problem with paora or retarot. Remember, paora could lead to hypokalemia. And you are giving this to patient who would have been dealing with Crocidium difficile, who will have hypokalemia on his own. So keep an eye on the value of potassium. Thanks for listening. Vancomycin is a very good antibiotic. But please rewind and listen to this presentation again and take note of those conditions that could lead to death in patients taking vancomycin, such as concomitant administration of certain medications, renal system impairment, and so on. Remember to share this. Remember to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it.